Imagine saying something super intellectual, something that could touch the hearts of millions of black Americans. And right after that, somebody says, man, whatever. Nigga. That's exactly how they treated MLK in this episode. We are here to talk about boondocks and how it is a hood masterpiece i have five episodes that we're here to break down and talk about because jesus this is some of the funniest television i ever seen and the first thing that we're here to touch on pause on that that was crazy is the return of the king and i'm not gonna lie this might be my favorite episode of boondocks so in this episode this man huey is having this like dream basically and in this dream mlk does get shot but this month it survives it instead of instantly dying this dude mlk goes into a coma and he's asleep for 20 years now this dude mlk wakes up and it's all over the news i mean everybody's talking about it and when he finally makes his first appearance stepping out of that hospital everybody in the crowd goes crazy even this dude right here bro i'm not gonna lie the funniest thing about boondocks is anytime they have a character that's doing or saying something super ghetto it is one of the most generic looking black people i've ever seen in my life and when i say generic i mean the stereotypical black person look at this dude baggy clothes big nose big lips like come on bro boondocks damn near draw caricatures of like black people bro and i know it's to pick fun at the stereotypes white people give us so it's just mwah, chef's kiss but this dude is hilarious he sees mlk and instantly yo what's good mlk what up man? hey man i'm with you mlk hey man you know what i'm saying i had a dream and all that you know what i mean this dude mlk has no idea what is happening right now he is being goddamn flashbang bro black dude came in like a concussion grenade now because of the newfound fame and clout that this man mlk has bro he's getting merchandise deals a book deal a biopic about him bro he even goes to an award show and starts talking to puff daddy bro hello ladies and gentlemen one day i had a dream and i'm still Still having it, Puff Daddy. I can't stop, won't stop, don't know how to stop. Which is super hilarious, cause right after this award show, my man MLK goes on the talk show and they ask him how he feels about the terrorist attacks that happened during 9-11. And this nigga tells him that just like a Christian should, we should turn the other cheek to our enemies. Bro, did you just say we should let terrorists slide? Oh, hell no. Well, obviously that didn't go as planned. Now everybody starts hating MLK, which is crazy. I mean, America is mad as shit. They have propaganda about him. They on the news talking about how he's a bad American, that he's a traitor. Bro, it's a white dude on this one news show that calls him an Al-Qaeda lover. Yeah, well, recently we had a very, very, very traitorous American and former freedom fighter talking about how he loves Al-Qaeda. Uh, oh, so you're an Al-Qaeda lover. Well, why don't you just bend over and put your fucking cheeks up so they can ram you? At least let Al-Qaeda take you on a date before they you i'm just saying excuse me sir sir we're live right now oh this wasn't this wasn't rehearsal no sir you're on live television oh sh free thug this reminds me of this anime named bleach so because this happened his book gets canned it ends up getting picked up by this small publisher but nobody buys it because obviously they think he's full of sh one of the funniest things that happened in this episode was this dude runs into uncle ruckus bro and uncle ruckus is hilarious this dude was throwing bricks at mlk when he was first trying to do his whole freedom fighter thing well you shut the fuck up you black son of a bitch. the white man has done nothing wrong if it was up to me i'd let the hounds out on you yo who the fuck is that motherfucker talk hey fix your fucked up eye cuz and i would shoot you myself but i realized the white man got better aim but as we're having this discussion with racist ass uncle ruckus we realized at a dinner that they go to that this man granddad had been prank calling rosa parks bro he was mad at rosa parks for stealing his thunder apparently it was granddad who told that cop on that bus that he wouldn't give his seat up first but everybody just started listening to rosa parks because she's a woman black woman it's like oh my god a black woman stood up for herself that dude granddad got off the bus and thought that he was about to get some clout off that and the only thing that happened was a cop came by and told him stay out of trouble now this dude tom is at the table too bro and he's talking about how he's so proud and how he's so grateful to meet this dude mlk and riley instantly man if you don't get off his dick man riley shut up bro what you talk i'm just saying man that motherfucking dick riding me riding that motherfucking mlk dick like a rodeo i ain't gonna lie that man tom was using mlk dick 
for transportation. I'ma keep it a band, bro. But being right did not stop Raleigh from getting his ass beat, bro. I hate Morgan Freeman King. So the next day, this man MLK gotta go to this meeting thing. This man Huey trying to get him out the room. He don't wanna go, but he eventually drags him out, bro. Now he takes him to the meet and they end up eating and stuff and they talk about how they wanna start their own political party. So he goes on the interview to announce it, bro. And the announcer starts tweaking. Okay, so I just have a few questions. Uh, so recently you did some really traitorous shit. And uh, I, I just want to know, uh, do, do you love America? Well, I think that. No, no, no. No, answer the fucking question. Do you love America? Sir, I will not be coerced to answer your white devil ass questions. Now, shut the fuck up, Elvis Presley. Motherfucker, I don't even look like Elvis. So this interview gets cut short because Huey don't like the way he's talking to that dude MLK, bro. Huey get to put in the beats by Dre on his ass. I'm not going to lie. So they ended up going to the political party. Now, I know that you probably think political party is like, you know, an actual political party, but no, 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 no. This man, MLK, went to go get advertising from this hip hop station. They thought it was an actual party, so they setting everybody up, bro. They end up going to the party. They couldn't even get in, bro. The bodyguard at the front talking about big clothes is trash. He made both of them pay $50 to get in the party that they created. I ain't gonna lie, that's out of pocket. Bro, it's hustler preachers in there. Motherfuckers rap rappers giving each other truths fights happening and mlk had enough bro he went to the podium and he was tight will you niggas shut the fuck up all my life i've had a dream that we would live in prosperity now i can't even go outside without niggas asking me pronouns they them nigga i'm him i had to go to goddamn mcdonald's the other day and i couldn't even get a double cheeseburger for a dollar anymore them shits is like three dollars what the fuck are we doing? Y'all in here fighting, carrying on, and we should be learning to live together in peace and harmony. Blacks of all shades and colors. Yeah, you two light-skinned niggas. I almost excluded you, but I really fucked with Drake and Chris Brown. So after he gives this speech, bro, Huey goes on to say that the world changed and that black people started taking up for each other and he ends the episode with saying, well, we can dream. And it says that Oprah will be running for president in 2020. Thank God it's 2024 and we didn't get Oprah, but we got Donald Trump. Shit crazy. But you know what's even more crazy, bro? Gangsta Licious, the most homoerotic thug that I've ever seen in Boondocks. Now this dude is out here. He is the definition of the rapper that's in the closet. He needs to get out that joint. I'm not not gonna lie. Motherfucker was in the closet longer than Tom Cruise in South Park, bro. This dude is gay. And there's nothing wrong with that, bro, but you know, he's homosexual. Bro, you knew this episode was gonna be some bullshit because they gave a literal message in the beginning from management saying that this was all for jokes and any rappers that they felt were getting depicted, please don't come after them. They don't got no bodyguards. They don't pay me enough for security. They could do that. Shoot me, cuz. So we start the episode off with, I guess this is supposed to be Sway. And he's telling us about Gangsta Lition and Eat Dirty's beef, right? Now, this dude Eat Dirt. Now, this, yeah, I said Eat Dirty. My fault. This dude Eat Dirt sound crazy. I'm not going to lie, bro. What type accent is that? Bro was on there talking like he had peanut butter in his mouth. I'm not going to lie, bro. Uh, that shit was out of pocket. Like, I don't even know. What was he saying? He said, man, goddamn, man, 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 the pickle, man, man, man. Motherfucker sound like the black boom hour, boy. Type of shit. And what's up with them locks, man? Somebody, man, get this nigga a retwist. Then his right hand man talking about, look here, man. They ain't done what we done did and they ain't had what we done had, man. Gangs delicious ain't done nothing what we done did or done had, nigga. Like, what the fuck is you talking about? So they end up fighting each other at, the, I guess, a restaurant and, and shooting each other, bro. But this dude got shot again, bro. He was in the club bro niggas ran up on him on stage and shot him niggas started singing i got shot and the crowd is repeating the words bro they don't even realize he got shot riley said it took him 45 minutes to get there bro on the ground looking crazy right now yo the crowd just out there like yo i got shot me too i also got shot man this dude gang delicious boy i ain't gonna lie i wonder you think they was making fun of 50 cent i ain't gonna hold you because like dude kept getting shot but ain't no way bro they making fun of 50 50, bro 50 ain't got no gay allegations at least i don't think he did well as they're watching this dude get shot on this documentary bro this dude huey's like 
See, and that's why we need to go to college so we don't end up like him. But Riley wants to go to the hospital to visit and granddad is not letting him go, bro. So this dude, Riley took it upon himself to do anything he could to end up getting there. Bro, get the fuck out of here, bro. This dude tried to fall down the steps to go see a grown man at a hospital. W Glaze, my guy. Uh, you work for Krispy Kreme? Back at it again at Krispy Kreme. Cause the glaze is crazy. So obviously this dude granddad not falling for the falling out of steps thing. So so this dude Riley get behind his car when he's backing up and let him hit him. Again, granddad just pick him up, dust it off like nothing happened. So Riley had to go to, you know, desperate measures. This dude grabbed granddad's goddamn orange carton and drank it all in front of him, bro. Straight mouth pause on that. That was crazy. I can't believe that he did that. Now granddad was about to kill him, but he decided that he sent him to go get orange juice, which is what Riley wanted in the first place. Please. Yo, please send me off to get orange juice so that I can go to the hospital and see Gangs Delicious. Dude, really go to the hospital, bro. We get to the front desk. This happens. Uh, yes, excuse me, sir. Um, Can I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to go see Gangs Delicious. Okay, Gangs Delicious. Uh, and who are you? Uh, I'm his 18th kid. Oh, sure, sure. You're his kid. Uh, I'm obviously not going to ID you or anything. You're eight years old. Go ahead and go up and see this adult. Like, get the fuck out of here, bro. So this dude, Riley, go to go see him and obviously Gangs delicious is cool you know you know you're a fan and stuff but you can tell when he went in he was mad paranoid that got me thinking i'm like okay why he paranoid in this bed i don't know so him and riley get to talking about the assassination and stuff and he tells riley it's from drug gang ops but yeah riley you know uh, the drug ain't cool but it's not cool but 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 it's mostly cool and, and you know I, I don't fear no man no, no man but god plus you know little dude there's cops out there i ain't seen no cops coming up what, what, you, what you mean? What, no cops. What, what you mean? So as all of this is happening, Riley is on the lookout because there's some guys that came out that look like they're trying to finish the job of killing Gangs Delicious, bro. In the middle of him trying to hide from him, granddad called his phone. He gave this dude Riley this fat ass phone, bro. He gave this dude a damn. What is this, bro? This is a fucking payphone portal, motherfucker. Like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. This look like a nigga tried to call somebody on the Nintendo Switch. This drawing big as shit. Like, this is white dude trying to buy it because he likes big ass antique electronics like bro what are we talking about right now i ain't gonna lie so as this dude riley is trying to run away from these dudes with this big ass phone they end up running into uncle ruckus and jesus christ they made him shit himself bro editor please play the fart noise bro that this dude uncle ruckus made where's gangsta licious he literally shit on himself. Don't even worry about me, boy. I got hella depends on. And if I'ma use it or not, that depends on. All right, that was a bar angle. <laughs> So after Uncle Ruckus tell him, sorry, I can't hear you over shitting myself, Riley finally gets to the room and tells Gangsta Delicious that, niggas, come in. Oh, that was crazy. So this dude is scared. He's terrified. Oh my God, Riley. Riley, we gotta, we gotta get out of here. Little, little, little dude, we gotta get out of here, huh? We gotta get out of here. I thought that you didn't fear no man but God. Riley, that, and the guy that shot me. Which makes perfect sense, bro. This dude, Gangsta Delicious, the zestiest dude in Boondocks. I ain't gonna lie, bro. He's straight zesty, yo. If he went to the, to the prison, yo, where the booty warrior was at. <laughs> now, I tell you what, I like you and I want you. Now, we can do this the easy way or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. So anyways, they running away from the dudes in the hallway. This man gangsta delicious drop his strap. They get outside, Riley like, yo, where your gun at? I, I dropped it. I, how you dropped the gun? What the fuck is that is not gangster. That is very not gangster. So they get outside and they find this dude that's a fan of gangsta delicious. So he ends up taking a car. But the thugs is chasing them, bro. And they finally get him cornered. Oh nah. So they got my man Riley and Gangsta Delicious in the damn trunk, bro. They having a conversation. Yeah, Riley, you know, back in the day. Day I wanted to be Ice Cube. Ice Cube? He was a gangster? Man, he was the gangsterest man. I fuck with Ice Cube, son. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with all the movies he do. I'll be there yet. Triple X. You know what I'm saying? Friday, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I be getting high watching that shit, y'all. What? So they end up stripping them butt naked, bro, and they try to shoot them, but they miss all the shots because they're garbage. And to this day, even though know, this situation was fucked up, Riley is keeping the secret. I mean, he told a couple people i think he told huey actually is the only one and we're going to talk about that because now we're in gangsta 
Delicious Part 2, bro. Now, Gangsta Delicious Part 2 is mad funny, bro, because this dude is turning up crazy. He got brand deals, clothing. Gangsta Delicious is spazzing out, y'all. Now, he made this smash hit called Homie Over Hoes, and it goes a little something like this. Do the homie, do the homie, homie over hoes. And I ain't gonna lie, that's the most zesty song I've ever heard in my life, bro. Oh, nah. But since this dude Gangsta Delicious think Riley know a secret, even though he kind of repressed the memory, or he tried to, he sends him a bunch of stuff. Stuff that's gonna keep him invested in, you know, Gangsta Delicious. Stuff that's gonna keep him fly, keep his mind off of telling anybody what happened. Now, Huey sees this, and he's like, yo, yo, what's up with bro sending you stuff? Uh, anyways, you cool that he's gay? Who said he was gay? Man, man it's not gay. I, I, man, I do the homie. <laughs> Come up from the guy that calls everything gay. Nigga, you gay. You gay. Y'all niggas are gay. Nigga, you gay. That's gay. And listen, man, I, I dream he kissed another man. Man, I don't dream about my idols kissing, bro. Last night I saw Muhammad Ali in my dream, but he was fighting Joe Frazier. He wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Kissing another dude. Ew, shut up, gay nigga, gay. <laughs> Yo, this dude Riley is out of pocket, bro. How you gonna repress somebody's voice by screaming a goddamn gay and, and plugging your ears like out of pocket? So him and Thugnificent meet up, bro, and they had this conversation. And Thugnificent feel like they could use, you know what I'm saying, a feature and shit to get back right. Thugnificent and his crew, they, you know what I'm saying, they down bad. Like later in the seasons, you'll see one of his men got a part-time job, bro, because they were so down bad, bro. Stuff wasn't selling no more, you know what I'm saying? So they needed that little battle bounce back bro that was the whole plan so this man riley called him bro they had this conversation yo what up lish yeah, yeah what up little man what, what's what's going on yeah bro so you know how i'm down with the lethal interjection oh yeah 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 they did the f granddad john facts 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 listen man they want to do the remix with you bro the, the remix remix of what man you know what i'm talking about man that homie over hoes oh yeah 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 hey listen man anything for the little homie man just tell him call my people man so right now boom this dude riley solidified the feature for him i'm not gonna lie he went crazy but as he goes home his granddad spots him bro starts asking him like where his pants at where his clothes at the dude like man granddad this the style right now i'm fly right now so granddad thinks naturally that his son well, I mean, grandson is a little, you know, is a little zesty. So he goes and talks to Uncle Ruckus about it. Obviously, Uncle Ruckus don't got nothing positive to say, bro. He said he almost a grown man now. It's only a little bit longer for somebody ramming it in him. This dude Uncle Ruckus is out of pocket, bro. So since granddad thinks that Riley is gay, bro, he then has this conversation with Huey about it. Huey like, oh, we got to divide the house. And, and oh, you going to do the bathroom? Hell yeah, I'm going to do the bathroom. Bro, motherfucker got his own bathroom, own room. You know what I'm saying? He might as well get his own crib. At this point, man, he going crazy. So granddad decides to make Riley go talk to Pim Man Slickback, bro. And it's some of the funniest shit ever, bro. Shout out to Cat Williams, bro. Yo, how you feel about homies of old? Oh, excuse me? I have never, ever been encountered with that. What? But what is that? Man, it's the homies over hoes. Oh, ooh, homies over hoes. Oh, nah, that is a sentiment that a pimp named Slickback cannot get with. I, I will put a lot of over a hoe. Money, a fresh pair of gators, a turkey sandwich with just tomato on it. Oh, but but homies? No, no, I don't do shit for the homies. That sound like some gay shit to me. Bro, this dude bodied him in debt. That's on crazy. Told Riley about it, so, bro, I ain't gonna lie. This dude, Uncle Ruckus, asked him, you gonna stop loving him? This dude thought for a minute too i ain't gonna lie bro he said well yeah well i don't know bro this dude said i'm not homophobic but gay people give me the ebg that is homophobia bro that's crazy so somebody finally comes out with a book on gangsta delicious bro which i think is hilarious bro talking about how he's super gay and that's why they didn't work out now this dude's reputation is is, is, is smeared he go on a radio show he don't even address it he's just talking about man mom like me stop snitching like what do you think was gonna happen bro like bro went on there didn't even explain himself he said yeah man i i don't gotta explain myself to a bitch man you know what i'm saying i just feel like motherfuckers need to stop snitching out there man whether you calling to the cops or calling in you know what i'm saying or in a book man that's just snitching okay so you just gonna talk in circles oh <laughs> So Riley don't believe this girl, bro, saying she lied. But Huey bring up a good point. He's like, well, I listen to Elton John, but I'm not gay. Wait, is Elton John gay? 
Yeah. Then you is gay. Man, some people gonna call me gay, man. Now she says his granddad walks in the room and does the craziest 360 I've ever seen, bro. So after Gangsta Licious' whole, like, his sexual preference is put into the world, everybody stops fucking with him. She shows up at the magnificent house. They hiding, bro. One of the dudes jumped in a pool. I don't know how long he been holding this, bro. I ain't gonna lie. But they was not getting in there. I'm gonna keep it a band. <laughs> So Raleigh comes to the realization that, you know, that his idol, you know, he gay, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we got this whole moment where him and granddad are crying over it, bro. Bro crying because he might be gay, bro, it's crazy, bro. And he has a confronting gangsta delicious at the end of the episode too, bro. Man, just tell the truth. You gay. Will hip hop ever accept an outwardly gay rapper? I don't know. Me and Rocky cuddle and watch Smack DVD. I don't cuddle. I be licking this nigga braids like. <laughs> bro, you know what is mad fire though, bro? The itis episode. The itis episode is mad fire, bro. Because, <laughs> because I ain't gonna lie, the food in that joint look fire. I'm gonna keep it a band, bro. This dude granddad was making pork flavored everything. Pork flavored broccoli. Yo, but Tom White brought some peach cobbler, bro. This motherfucker. Riley said it looked like vomit. So Riley and Granddad arguing about the peach cobbler, bro, because Riley don't want to eat it. Granddad start beating him. You can't make me eat it. That shit is so funny, bro. And Tom White is just sitting there looking sad, bro. Don't even know what to do. So Granddad beat him anyway, bro. So they have this meal together, but it's crazy pork, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Pork everywhere. And it makes them sleepy. They get the itis. Ed Wansler get the idea to make a restaurant called the Itis. He ends up going to this health spot that he has, yo. And this part is mad funny. He go in there, this white girl approach him. Would you like to sign my petition for some bullshit? This dude, look at If you don't get that shit out my face, bitch, yo, that joint had me weak. I ain't gonna lie. So this dude, Wansler, basically says he wants to make everything urban, more nigga, bro. He fires everybody in the restaurant to make room for the new one. Except for the, you know, illegal Mexicans, obviously. Right here at the block with the Tommy said, what's up, boo? Hey, what's happening? Tap in with us. Where the bitches at, though? Yes, sir. We're trying to kick it. So, Granddad has to make some more food, some new stuff. He makes this Luther burger, which is like one pound patty. It's like bacon on both sides, cheese, and it's in between two Krispy Kreme donuts and more bacon on top, bro. This dude Riley ate it and went to a food coma, man. <laughs> but Riley had a good idea to put beds in a restaurant instead of a table, so they did that. But this food that's in here turns to crack, bro. It's like the crack epidemic, but it's food, bro. People is turning to park across the street into like a homeless hub because they losing their jobs people was going there so much that they was losing their jobs bro they was like missing work falling asleep all types of shit bro that joint is crazy metal arc park basically became the hood which is wansler's whole like plan he wanted this restaurant to make the area shitty so he could go buy the park later and that's what he ends up doing but this shit is funny bro as soon as the first mugging happened bro cops just stopped coming there people was calling the cops yo they wasn't coming for like three hours bro uh, excuse me 911 someone just got shot in the head uh yeah where you at uh over on metal art beep 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 <laughs> Yo, like that shit is crazy but as all of that is happening bro the worst thing that could possibly happen happens and a white woman files a lawsuit bro which is why once they ends up shutting the restaurant down she ended up having a heart attack there which is crazy but granddad had a dream for a successful restaurant and he did have one bro it just got shut down which sucks but it's all good at least they still having sunday dinner they switched the menu up but now instead of them getting the itis they got the shits i guess riley was feeding them that vegetables man and that horse food i ain't gonna lie bro the next episode i want to talk about is thanks for not snitching now i ain't gonna lie this ed wants the junior and his homie is robbing houses bro was talking on his headset in the car right being mad zesty by accident yeah i love your voice it's sexy man who the fuck is you talking to cuz uh, oh my fault cuz i'm on this damn earpiece right now man what the fuck man man turn your dumb ass shit off man motherfucker think you got a robot ear on motherfucker ain't i robot you ain't will smith man shut your ass up come on bro so they get in the house and they had this conversation about why the phone is dumb bro but while this is happening you know what i'm saying and they're explaining this things are a broom because three houses got robbed that week, bro. So the cops see granddad outside the next day. They try to talk to him. Granddad like, I ain't see nothing. I don't know nothing. And he closed the door. That's the no stripping policy. You know what I'm saying? My boy Huey explains it, you know, as he normally does. Stop snitching merchandise, all types of shit, bro. So Uncle Ruckus see Riley like the next day he interrogate him. 
where were you at last night? Man, I was in my bed asleep. Oh, uh, no, I saw you robbing them houses. Motherfucker, I'm eight years old. I was in the crib. And I see those wheels. You need a permit. And fuck you, cross-eyed bitch. Your belly hanging out too fat, motherfucker. Take money. And this dude, Riley, dip off, bro. So they got the neighborhood watch. The white woman in there, bro, she looked like she up to no good. I ain't gonna lie, bro. She's trying to press the robbers. They want to basically go and fight them they souls. Now, Uncle Ruckus with his racism says that it's the Freeman boys, bro, but Tom stands up and defends them. But the white woman asks Tom, well, how come they won't talk to cops? And everybody in the room is like, oh, gasp, because they are all are snitches, which is crazy. So Tom says that they can't interrogate him, but they go to go talk to Granddad anyway. And Granddad says he doesn't like how the whole neighborhood is becoming a tatty tale central. Y'all out here tatty telling, snitching, lame adding. But Riley says, no snitching, Granddad. Now, he ends up working on this bike later that night, bro. And Ed Wansler came through for another robbery at a different house, but this time the white lady sees him and shoots at him. So he run in there and he's trying to hide with Riley, but they end up stealing granddad's car. Now granddad is in there answering questions all nervous and shit, but Riley just talking about his spinning wheels. So the cop ends up getting them out of there, bro. But if they don't say anything within the next few days, they're going to get charged. Bro, it's so bad. Tom and Jasmine in the crib wearing wires, bro. Jasmine walked in like, hey, guys, how are you doing? You guys uh, sell any dope today? Like, motherfucker, how obvious can you be? Even Tom in the damn closet, bro, out of pocket. Now, Ed wants the junior end up running into granddad's house. This time, though, granddad shoots him, hits him with that blue blocker. Boom! But because granddad decides not to snitch, they give the car back to him in exchange. The only thing is, the next day when they leave, granddad snitch and close the door anyway, but it's Ed Wansler's kid and he's white so nothing happens nobody believes it everybody in the crowd's like well they're white they couldn't have done it it's so crazy though because right after all of that happened my man riley looking for his bike and can't find it and guess who took it bro guess who took his damn bike my nigga yeah that's right ed wansler jr and his mans took my dude riley bike i couldn't believe it damn riley how you gonna get from point a to point b but you gotta walk huh